Vinny Tortorich here. Hey, man, if you're a fan of Vizzy, you might be a fan of me, too. I'm the guy that gets people to lose a lot of weight. I have something free for you guys. This is no clickbait. Just go to VinnyTortorich.com, and there's a big banner. It's a free PDF, How to Lose Weight. It's an intro guide to NSNG at VinnyTortorich.com. Go check it out exclusively for anyone who listens to Izzy Presley. Thank you. Replay Guitar Exchange is your premier independent guitar store. Being independent is good. With all of the major brands, including new, vintage, and pre-owned, you can find the guitar, bass, amp, or accessory you are dreaming of. From vintage to the newest models, Replay Guitar Exchange can help you find that perfect piece. They have industry veteran expert staff, all players like you, down to the owner. You aren't just getting a great guitar, you're getting the Replay difference. Find them online at ReplayGuitar.com and find your dream guitar today. Rockwood Saloon Authentic Apparel takes rock and roll fashion to a new level with their tees and tanks for men and women. They also make custom shirts, jackets, vests, pants, hoodies, beanies, and more. The Rockwood Graphics Department can design anything from your logo, t-shirt design, promo posters, band swag, and printed at great prices. From tour shirts and custom stage gear to killer threads from the street to the stage, Rockwood Saloon has it all. Rockwood Saloon, authentic rock and roll apparel for stage and street. World Tour tested for quality, comfort, style, and durability. Check them out at www.rockwoodsaloon.com. That's rockwoodsaloon.com. Hi, this is Bobby Brown, and welcome to another fucking podcast. You kids with your loud music and your Dan Fogelberg, your Zima, hula hoops, and Pac-Man video games, don't you see people today have attention spans that can only be measured in nanoseconds? See, son, old legends never die. They just lose weight. It's like a legend and an outer world from with a lot of light. Yes, it is party time. Hello, Hollywood. Hello, world. Hello, my loyal minions. It is good to see you. And as always, good to be seeing Izzy Presley with you live. From Hollywood, California, and beautiful downtown Burbank, Tiffany is in studio. We're going to get to her in just a minute, but first, let's get to all the goodies. Make sure you did do hit up all of the social media, at Real Izzy Presley, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for all my daily shenanigans, entertainment news, and uh, food and dog pics. Then, of course, the show page is Another Effin' Podcast on Facebook. Make sure you click like on unfollow and all of those. And uh, hit that shop button. Christmas is almost here. There's still time to buy t-shirts like uh, Drunken Summit t-shirts and Another Effin' Podcast t-shirts and ACK, a tribute to Ace Fraley t-shirts. And, of course, the ever-popular I Love Van Hagar Deal With It t-shirts. Those are available as well, all on the Teespring page. Just hit the shop now button. And you will get them. If you do not want to buy shit, but you want to donate to help the show out, that is very easy as well. Izzy Presley at Yahoo.com is your PayPal. Send me money. No questions asked. Asks. Asks. I think I got too drunk last night. I can't even talk. So, yeah, go ahead and do that, too. I, I, I won't say no. Let's just say that. And, of course, you can catch me every single morning, Monday through Friday, on the Monsters of Rock radio network. On the Dash Radio Network, live via satellite worldwide, get the Dash Radio app, or just go on your browser and go to dashradio.com slash monsters of rock, and you can hear myself Monday through Friday, 4 a.m. to 10 a.m., spinning music and uh, talking a lot of bullshit. Of course, it is totally uncensored because it is satellite, so it is my chance to be me. And of course, the almighty Harlan is on after me, Chips Enough on the weekends, Rudy Sarzo doing a show every weekend called The Six Degrees of Sarzo. Oh, I love some chips enough. Hey, brothers and sisters, chip rules. And, of course, every Sunday night, three sides of the coin radio on the Monsters of Rock channel. It is great. Two hours of kiss every week. Gotta love it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Tiff, we didn't actually do a... uh, Can you yap in that thing for a second? Hello, hello, hello. Oh, that is beautiful. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen... Returning to the show, but the first time live, the the last time I interviewed you, it was after your show at the Whiskey. I was drunk. (laughs) Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. And uh, the laugh was coming out. Now I just have a hangover. Now you just have a hangover. Yes. We can fix that. There's a bottle I'm of I'm drinking beer. water today. <laughs> Today's a water that we, is, rehydrate day. <laughs> that is okay. So, and, and uh, that day we, uh, we kind of touched on all the history. You know, we, yes. we kind of did that. We got that part out of the way. There's still a couple little things that we have to yap at. But a lot of this is talking about where you've been. And, uh, of course, your brand new record, which is called Pieces of Me, which I just mm-hmm. listened to today, and it blew my fucking mind. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, get out and buy that. Don't stream it. Go buy it. It's, it's what, 10 bucks on iTunes? Something like that. Something just Something like that, Just yeah. go buy it. Just go buy it. It's fucking amazing. Um, yeah, you're mm-hmm. back in town. Um, you Are you moving back here? I am, actually. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know when. It's going to be you know, next year, right. obviously. And um, hopefully before... A lot of the touring and madness starts for me during the summer. But yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm an LA girl, born and raised here, Norwalk, yeah, right. California, that's representing. Right. Um, and yeah, I think it's the right time for me to move back here. I'm still going to keep my place in Nashville, but you know, for everything I want to do and all the wonderful things that are happening because of the album, it's just right. opening up all these doors, which is amazing. And I'm forever grateful. Um, but when that happens, you just got to kind of seize the moment. I've been waiting for a long time and working on it for a long time. So I'm going to make it happen. Right. Yeah. And we're, we're going to get into that long wait. Um, but so how long have you been in Nashville? I've been this time in Nashville 10 years. Okay. Uh, I moved there in the early 90s, was there about seven years and moved back to L.A. And, um, you know, I love Nashville. But I again, for me, I think, you know, all the different things that I want to Start to do a cooking show. Oh, um, yeah, different things that I've, are also you know passion of mine. Right, so, right. Um, and you know, I, I just why not? Uh, it's something I like to do. So you know, and I've been offered over the years to do it and kind of just put it to the side. But I think now, like I said, 2019 is the year to make it all happen. Absolutely. Actually, uh, did, did you like own a store at one point? I did. Tiffany's Boutique was okay. in. I had two uh, in Nashville. Close those down because I'm on the road so much. And they were so hands-on. Um, you know, working a small business is a lot of work. Uh, and then, you know, I did a lot of, like, buying for the store myself and meeting with people that, you know, would bring in one-of-a-kind pieces and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it was really a project for me for three years, very hands-on. And then I decided couldn't really do it and be on the road. And it right. just lost its, its, it lost its vibe, put it that right. way. Well, how I know about that, uh, Avery Carl. Uh, the wife of one Luke Carl from uh, Hair Nation on Sirius XM commented earlier when I said that you were coming in. Uh, she used to have a store in White House, Tennessee, where Luke and I used to live. One time we rode there on his motorcycle. He parked right up front. She happened to be in there and she goes, whose bike is that? And Luke was all, see, chicks love my bike. <laughs> and then she goes, well, we need you to move it ASAP. Oh, and the wind was let out of the that? sails. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, Are you sure great. it was me? That doesn't sound like me. I'm not too sure. But somebody must have been telling me to move it because I was pretty like, you know, I'm right. like, I'm a free spirit. I'm like, come on in. <laughs> right, right. No, I just thought that was hilarious. I'm like, yeah, take that. Yeah, Luke. that was that was my first uh, shop. And then I moved into East Nashville, expanded a little bit. I mean, I love it. I'll go back to it. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's it's another passion of mine. And, and I think that, you know, now, you know, I'm kind of working in some some of those one of a kind items into my merch. So stay tuned for that as well. Um, but yeah, it just, you know, I mean, it's been great to have a 30 year career, but then to also do other things that, you know, have interested me over the years. And when there were gaps, there was no music. Right, right, right. Oh God, we got some people jumping in already in the, in the chat room, Scotty Strickland. Hello, Tiffany. He's from, uh, Canada. Uh, welcome back to the show. I still crush on you. Thanks. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lori Nickel checking in from Australia. Tom Cullen, how you doing? I'm coming to Australia. Pass the word out. I'm really? going to actually open up for Bananarama, but then I'm taking my own band um, following that, and we're going to do some dates over there. It's my first time going to Australia. So, again, I'm going to just, you know, go out with my message of new music. Yeah, yeah. But I'm excited to tour with Bananarama. That's going to be fun. I didn't know they were still around. Yeah, they just got back together, I think, last year. So they're very busy. They're touring, and I'm going to open up for them. Be a, like a, not really an opener, but, but like a guest yeah, artist yeah. and come out and do 13 dates with them all Kick over ass. Australia. So, Kick yay. Ass. Finally, well, I get to go there. 
feel free to bring me back one of those uh, hot Australian gals. Um, I like them blonde, like a young Olivia Newton-John. Okay. You know, my first you have boner. To send me some pictures yeah. so oh. I get it right. Oh, absolutely. That's fine. <laughs> and tell them uh, I, I will be happy to offer them a green card if they want help. You know? Nice. You know, and you're doing, uh, but you're doing some dates this summer all over in kind of like a package tour, right? Uh, well, I'm going out with the new kids on the block. That's right. Yes. That's right. So I, uh, somebody had commented and said they have tickets to go see that up in Minna- it's Minneapolis. It's myself, so. Debbie Gibson, Naughty by Nature, Salt and Pepper, and New Kids on the Block. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's uh, a very uh, fitting bill. You know, yeah, I mean, it's is, a great night of music. Yeah, you know, absolutely. 80s music and just, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a party. It's going to be a good time. And being on the road with everybody, I've met all the artists and stuff, and they're, they're going to be a lot of fun. So there's going to be a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Stay tuned for me as well, Tiffany Tunes, because I'm going to be just do you know just kind of probably doing some videos from that and anything I can get myself into. I think it should be documented. It's going to be All a right. lot of fun. Oh, Johnny Martin is listening. Look Hello, out, Johnny. Uh, and yes, I'm listening. And stop saying gals. Oh, screw you, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, let's get into um, kind of where we left off. I, actually, I didn't go back to listen to the interview, but I because I think we were both kind of schnookered that night. Oh yeah, no, um, I was. But uh, you know, yeah. You sure I was talking about my life? I don't know. What yeah, I, was I don't know. About. I don't know. Really? You might have been <laughs> pretending you were Debbie Gibson. I, I don't we were know. Just hanging out. <laughs> well, I'd never do that. But I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> I love you, Deb. Though. Uh, that's one person I really want to get on the show. Last year for for um, for. Um, um, Th- or not Thanksgiving, but uh, Valentine's Day. I actually I wanted to have you and Debbie on together to give dating advice. Oh, that really? could have been fun, mm. or not? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I ended up having we're Bobby. Too, we're totally different. Well, that's see, that's people, the beauty of put it, it that way. I mean, I think it would have been fun to hear yeah. the difference. In, yeah, the exactly. I mean, we totally are. Di- I mean, we're we're friends. Yeah, yeah, and we get on really well, but. We're completely different. I am definitely much more the the bad girl of the two no. of us. I like it, though. I've had a great <laughs> life, um, and I'm way more interesting. But, you know, because I do, I'm a free spirit and whatever. And Deb's just a different person. She's more, you know, kind of not conservative by any means, right, but right. she's more, you know, doesn't really hang out with people. She likes to go to her shows, go right back home. I mean, she's she's – you know, approachable and stuff like yeah, that, yeah. but she's she's just that way. Right. Um, whereas I'm kind of like hanging out and talking to people and, you know, and she doesn't really like to see fans or anything before the show, mm-hmm. but, although we're going to do that for the NKOTB tour. We're going to do a meet and greet before because we have to. So, you know, I know that for her, she's like, okay, whatever, you know. she's. Um, but usually she's in her room before she sings where I'm like hanging out in the hallways or hanging out with the band and I like to go straight to stage. I don't like to like hang out. The energy dry, you know, dies oh, and I stuff like that. So I'm in and out, straight to stage, conjure all that energy, and then I'm ready to party after. Usually, so right, right. we're a little different. Deb gets in the limo and goes. <laughs> do, do you think? And uh, you might, you know, take this from your experience too. Uh, having the stardom that you did at at that young of an age, um, do, do you think maybe? And uh, obviously, for your for your um, for you too, did did you feel like you were uh, you had to protect yourself a little bit no i really never did okay i i just i am really a free spirit i mean i didn't you know i wasn't didn't come from hollywood i mean i norwalk california but my parents were in the industry mm-hmm. and they were very open people um you know so i grew up just kind of liking people and kind of finding my way and then fame came and you know the mall tour and all of that that was all working with the fans yeah yeah and being approachable and i still am that way you know i love my fans and i love making new fans and i love when people come to the shows especially the pieces of me tour they come out and they don't really know what to expect and a lot of people right. actually come out just to take the piss really or yeah. give me shit you know and then they find themselves really liking the music and i can see all the complexity in their faces like what am I going to do? Like, it's Tiffany, yep, and I yep. kind of like it. And I'm like, yeah. That's right. <laughs> and They're- then they meet me after, you know. And, and we, I mean, it's it's cool. I, I mean, I become, you know, a new, you know, they become a new fan. And then they get to know me. So, I'm, you know, and I get it. I'm, I'm so not offended. But I, I mean, that's the whole thing. I've been wanting right. to, the opportunity to show right. what I well, got. Well, I mean, you you have, there's that stigma, you know. It's the, it's the It's the pop young princess queen stigma that, okay, that's what she's, I think, we're alone now. That's who she is. Right. And you're obviously completely not. And that's not. totally a piece of me. I mean, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I love, I'm I'm so thankful that, who you know, you, 
I was nine years old, twirling around in my room, wanting to be Stevie Nicks. Mm-hmm. You know, I ended up with a career at 14, getting signed and having all that success. I mean, you know, I have to be thankful that my dreams come true because that's it doesn't happen for everybody. Right, so I'm right. very grateful. Always saying I think we're alone now could have been in my shows. Um, never denying that. Mm-hmm. But as an artist and the people that I've always guided to and I look up to and kind of formed my career and and my heart, you know, as a musician, they've all been, you know, people who are definitely not of the pop culture. Right. So, you know, I think that's the difference now. But I've I've been saying this story from the very beginning. It's yeah. not like I switch. You know, again, I really wanted to be like Stevie Nicks, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's nice now to like kind of do it full circle. I mean, it's taken me, like you said, it's taken me a, a long time. You know, I've been just staying with it. And there was times that I just kind of gave up and thought it's just never people aren't going to see me any different, um, you know, and and. And it was really not fulfilling for me. I really struggled right. with that. I mean, again, I'm so thankful to be doing a lot of the retro shows and stuff. But, mm-hmm. you know, it, I didn't see that as my future only. Um, and so there was, a, you know, a lot of times that I kind of just went, what am I going to do? I don't want to be just a retro artist. Right. Um, you know, and it's been times that, you know, having the right people in your life that encourage you just to do what your passion is, no matter what, and stay with it. And that's what I'm doing now. Well, and you actually have a very <laughs> – Lori says, did Tiffany just snort? That's I cool. did snort, Lori. <laughs> I did. Yes, you're going to hear that. I'm, plus, I'm hungover, so there's a lot of – Right, there, right. <laughs> Yeah, we ran into each other. Just having words. I don't know if yep. I'm speaking intelligently right now. I don't know. Don't <laughs> ask me any big, <laughs> big you know, you, uh, You're yeah. lucky enough um, because of the song – you know, the song, I think we're alone now. And even though, it, you know, it was, it was a cover song, but your version got that song done by Weird Al. I know. It was funny. I and, love him. Oh, First I of all, too. he's a wonderful person. Yeah, yeah. He's always been nice to me. He's quirky and funny and great. Um, but I thought that was an honor, and I loved his version. So it was very cool. I mean, the, the song itself has found a lot of homes. And, yeah, you know, yeah. People have remade it and you know, mm-hmm. punk bands, ska bands, all kind of people like that, um, musically. And then films, now they're popping in into all kinds of films, um, advertisement and commercials. So yeah. I'm always interested where I think we're low now is going to be. Right. And where it, 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 you know, I kind of don't really follow the song around, but right. it's kind of nice when it has this little resurgence of interest. I, I just, I just wanted to bring that up because a lot of people say that once Weird Al like spoofs you, you've made it. I know I felt very I, – I did. I mean, there's certain things, you know, that happen in your life and you go, it's a good day to be Tiffany. This is great. <laughs> right? I like it. <laughs> how did you – especially at that young of an age, how did you deal with um, the falling off the map? Well, I took myself off the road. So okay. I, I actually got off the road because I thought the music was pretty shit that I was doing in the second mm-hmm. album. Um, you know, I mean, again, I'm grateful, yeah, but absolutely. it was hard because you're riding the wave of success. So then, then there's another album in demand. You don't have the time like you did the first album. And I wasn't getting along with my producer at the time because I was growing and I really was wanting to change, you know, not my style completely, right. but I was just wanting better songs. Um, and you know, I felt the songs that were being tossed at me and I wanted to write and nobody was supporting that at all. Um, so I was frustrated there. And I just thought the songs that we had to choose from were complete crap. So I was mm-hmm. really embarrassed a lot of times recording those songs and taking them out on the road. They just weren't great. I think my producer knew it, George as well. But, you know, it's one of those things when the label is demanding an album, you can't say no. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, in touring behind them, I saw the blank faces and it's just like it's the worst feeling as an artist when you go yeah i don't know everything i can't I'm, you know 15 16 i can't speak up against all these adults and the label and everything and say no but i knew this was crap and now i have to go out there night after night and sing it to people and they're equally saying this is crap so i'm like right, right. this is fun um you know so i think that changed me a little bit i decided i wanted to get off the road um, and regroup and find people that would listen to me. And I didn't know what I was doing. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I felt very, uh, you know, like I said, I was touring with the new kids. Everything was going well, except for the album. We didn't have it. We weren't pulling as many singles, of course. And yeah. um, But I could have stayed on the road. I could have done other things. But I think for me, it was just kind of like, well, if it's the music's not right and I'm not loving it, 
then I'm going to stop for a second because I can't. I, I just don't want to do things that I, I don't feel, you know? Right. Well, I don't think any artist should, but I think there's a point too um, when you're under that, uh, when you're under that, you know, uh, under that label of saying, this is what we want you to do. Yeah. You don't or you're not going to have a yeah. career. And yeah. you don't want to burn bridges. Exactly. You know, and again, I was a kid. So, yeah, yeah. you know, if I said no to something, it wasn't like an adult saying no, you know, and or had experience behind it. Right. It looked like I was throwing a temper tantrum, yep. you know, and so and, and and people said, you don't know what you're doing. This is we're here in these positions for a reason. Yep. Um, and out of respect, I would trust. But, you know, again, as an artist, I think you can feel the music. And for yeah. me. I can also relate to my audience and knew that a lot of those songs weren't anything that we'd be listening to. Right, right, right. Oh, God, we got a lot more listener feedback here. Uh, Scotty wants to know, has there ever been any opportunities that you've, that you've strived to that were put aside because of the pop princess mystique? Well, I'm back on track now. I mean, yeah, doing a, a rock album, actually. Yeah. You know, over the years, I mean, I had an album out, uh, Color of Silence, in 2000. It was critically mm-hmm. acclaimed and, you know, Billboard gave it one of the best albums of the year. And I mean, you just can't buy that kind of stuff. I no. didn't expect that stuff at all. And that validation meant everything to me. Um, and I got to tell my story a little bit in Behind the Music um, for VH1. And, you know, all the, that kind of put me on the map a little bit like, oh, wow, yeah. she is a real artist, you know? Yeah. She has a brain and she's plugged in and she's growing and, you know, and we get it. But again, you know, I, I had Color of Silence. It was doing really well. Going to radio, the song was doing well. But then there's Tiffany. Yeah. And it's so frustrating. Did you, was there ever a point where you're like, well, maybe I should just rebrand myself and use my whole name or should I just stick with, I just, I have to be Tiffany? I've been asked to join bands. I've been asked to change my name. And I, I really considered it, you know, because it was like, well, that would be, you know, an interesting project or yeah. that would be one way around it. But I feel that why am I sorry for having success? Yeah. And I think that that's a big slap in the face to my fans who stuck with me over the years. And then, I mean, I'm not going to sit there and bullshit. I have all this story. To tell. Yeah, absolutely. So then what if I'm a new name, all that goes away? It just doesn't seem real. Mm-hmm. Like it, you know, it, I didn't think it was going to be really a way around the problem. So, you know, I just live my life. I just do what I'm doing and people will get it or they won't. And hopefully they'll get it. You know, I mean, that's kind of my job now. But more than anything, I'm I'm really just enjoying the music and living my life. So uh, so you, you you take yourself off the road. Um do you walk away from the industry at that time? I, well, I mean, yeah, I did for, I ended up having a baby, getting pregnant mm-hmm. and having a baby, which I think was great for me because it really grounded me there, you know, having millions of dollars and, you know, having downtime and yeah. not feeling really good about yourself at that time. And because I did, I walked off feeling like a failure, even though I chose mm-hmm. to leave the road, you know, I was just like, the music's all screwed up and. I don't have a manager now, and what am I going to do? And I was only 18. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I really didn't. And and at that time, too, because I was a kid, you're not really plugging into networking with people. So I didn't really have friends in the music industry, Uh people that I could call, um, because I was just a kid. And so, you know, I felt really lost for a while. um, And I ended up getting pregnant, which I was thrilled about. My son's 26 now. His name's Elijah. And, you know, I think that kept me out of trouble, though. Because right. I really could have seen myself probably crash and burn. I'm an excessive kind of personality and, you know, young Hollywood and all that kind of stuff. I'm not above going out and having a good time, put it that right, way. Right, right, So, you know, I think that for me that I was very straight laced. I was a mom, you know, totally sober, just just doing my mom thing. And, mm-hmm. I, and I loved it, you know, definitely. As, um, as you're seeing the music industry change in that time, um, were there thoughts of like, even if I did want to come back, would it, uh, would me coming back in this new era of music with that, uh, would it work? Oh, you mean like, like the, back then, back then, like after you, after you had your son and no, I think I've had to go through every, even me as a personality, uh-huh. I was very shy, you know, and I was kind of like, you, I, yeah, and I believe it. Wow. I, I know I was kind of shy and now I'm not. 
Uh, you know, <laughs> not at I, but all. The reason why I'm not is because I've been put in awkward situations, and right. I've had to learn to have a voice behind it and say this doesn't work for me, and not feel like. You know, I'm being manipulated or get too angry behind it or get sad. You know, I've kind of balanced myself to say, well, okay, this is what I want. And these are the people that I seek to work with. And Mm -hmm. the people who don't get it, it's okay. It's cool. Um, And then when I'm, you know, I mean, I run my own management company. I have help and partners and stuff like that and people that I consult. But for the most part, it's me in charge. And I've really grown up behind the business. I'm still making mistakes and learning every day. But that's part of it. Um, so I give myself a break, but there is a lot of things that I do know, again, from experience, and I'm applying that now. Right. So, I mean, no, I don't think that, you know, doing this back then would have worked because I wasn't really, really even living the music. Mm-hmm. Even though I wanted to be this, I needed to, to grow up a little bit. I needed to have some heartbreak and some failures and some... I had to have some damage, man. Right, right. Well, I, I've always found that the best songs come after you've gotten your heart ripped out of your ass. Yes, you know? yes, they do. I can write one of those <laughs> in a heartbeat, and you know, I mean, and I and I know how to give it back now too. You know, not yeah, just yeah. be this sad person that you left me. I'm like, really, fucker. Okay, so I mean, I'll, I'll definitely write those kind of songs. I mean, you know, I write everything. I've been really lucky to work with dance producers, and mm-hmm. but writing, you know happy songs i don't want to say i'm not a happy person right, right, right but just writing a little ditty is very hard for me you know um so some of the dance projects i really struggled mm-hmm. you know i was just like this is really happy way more happy than i ever want to be don't you think you know but um and i and i just i don't know as a writer i guide towards ballads a lot yeah. um but they're sad and solemn for sure but you know that's that's what it takes, I guess. That's that's what I bring. Um, you know, I love a good rainy day because I'm very productive and I'll find a corner somewhere and just jot down some lyrics. And it just naturally comes out of me when I'm in a hurtful place or mm-hmm. anything like that. I find that that's probably when I'm most creative. So, you know, I mean, that's my therapy. Yeah, well, I, I'm the exact same way. And there's usually um, a bottle of Jack Daniels involved at the same time. <laughs> I mean, you know, I really don't drink at home. People don't realize that. But when I'm on the road, yeah, definitely. I mean, I started drinking Jim Beam just to kind of clean the the throat a little bit. It's like an old blues thing. You know, you hold it back of your throat. It warms it. And it does clean out anything that is there. Um, And, you know, a couple cocktails. And then I started doing this show called A Million Miles where it's more intimate evening Uh um, with Tiffany. And I don't know, the more I kind of, not got drunk, but the more that I kind of loosened up and stuff, the more my personality and the more I kind of got into the show and, and, you know, people would laugh and we'd have a really good time. So, I mean, I never thought that I would be able to even carry a show like that. Right. Looking back even 10 years ago, I would have been like, well, I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm a singer. I'm just going to get out there and rock it, you know? Um, And now I'm like, Sometimes people go, are you going to sing or are you just going to talk? What is it? <laughs> I'm like, we're getting there. Uh, but, you know, I don't mind people in my world. I think that's the charm of the show and what I'm doing now is letting people know who I am mm-hmm. musically and as a, as a person. Uh, we're going go to go to break here in just uh, just a couple minutes. But I, I did want to ask you, I was you were nice enough to sign my my Playboy last time that that we talked. Um I, when when did how long bef- was it between they first approached you to, about doing it until you actually did do it? Was I mean was there a time where like they called you when you turned eighteen? It's like boom, it's time. No, they called me right during the Color of Silence album. So okay. and I said no because I was like, well, I don't I don't really know about working my music like right. that. That's I don't know. I just didn't sit well with me. But then, you know, three months in, again, having the, the record, the first single going to radio, it was doing really well. And then all the other crap about, well, you're Tiffany and the mall. And I just basically I said, yes, I called back and I said, you know what? I really want to do this. I'm so frustrated. I think it will, you know, change my image. Yeah. Not to mention I was actually going through a divorce at the time. And I thought, well, it's a nice way to part. So <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Take care. That is worth a Pat Fontaine laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I am Thank a redhead. You, hey, gingers, that's how we roll, man. There's, I'm a little mischievous. There's, uh, there's little... nothing like ginger rage is what I like exactly. to say. Well, and I suppose it was a chance for you to go, hey, fuck you. I'm a woman. 
I'm not this kid in the mall. I'm a yeah, fucking woman. Well, I knew that. Yeah. I mean, again, we were calling all the major shows like The View, and you know, no one was having us on. And then I go yeah. and do Playboy, and the phone doesn't stop ringing. So it was a way for me to get on there. And I think I said that on The View, actually. Um, and you know, and I was able to say, but I'm doing a new album, you know, and it, it worked a little bit. Yeah, there you go. All right, here's the deal. We're gonna take a short little break, and I'll be right back with more Tiffany. And we're gonna talk about the brand new record. Which is why you did want to come on. Awesome. Well, and that's Thank what you. that's that's you know that's what we do here. Talk, we're we're here to promote, Love you know, it. and tell you. stories and have fun, and sometimes get drunk. Not tonight. <laughs> I, yeah, it wouldn't be pretty. <laughs> no. Yeah, because the, the more she drinks, the more Janice laugh comes out of her. <laughs> well thank you hey no problem all right it is another effing podcast we'll be right back with the one and only tiffany rockstarleatherworks.com is your home for badass rock and roll gear featuring 100 percent handmade leather bands watches cuffs bracelets and more rockstar leatherworks has something for everybody whether you are going to the show or you are in it you can find something to fit your needs. Choose from a variety of designs or create your own masterpiece. Their bands and watches are second to none. They also ship international. Who needs a stage to be a rock star? Check out rockstarleatherworks.com. Retro Arcade brings Minnesota and surrounding areas arcade games from the days gone by. All of those great games from pizza joints and arcades are available in cocktail units and custom machines. Dozens of favorites from your youth in one machine to complete your game room or man cave. Retro Arcade also sells and services your favorite pinball machines. Find them at Facebook.com slash 80 Arcade. That's Facebook.com slash 80 Arcade. Retro Arcade. Your youth is just one click away if you need to promote your band or business or just want to stylize personalize or customize your ride check out vid-decals.com want to create and customize your own stickers representing your band or make your own bumper sticker vid decals can do it all stickers are printed on quality vinyl and can be placed on any flat surface stickers are an affordable way to promote your band or business go to vid-decals.com to get started that's vid-decals.com vid-decals.com Hey ladies, Sass Pants Designs will take that rock shirt that everyone has and make it your own in a flattering, sassy, and simple way. There are one-of-a-kind tank tops, lace-up tees, and tube top dresses already in stock. Check out the online store at sasspantsdesigns.com and like Sass Pants Designs on Facebook for special offers and custom orders. That's sasspantsdesigns.com, sasspantsdesigns.com. Sass Pants will make you the envy of the party. Hey, what's going on? This is Tom Arnold. I like uh, fat women and cocaine. And you're listening to Izzy Presley here on another uh, fucking podcast. And uh, I know Izzy uh, from Cocaine Anonymous Meetings. I've actually uh, seen him at the meetings with uh, uh, Ace Havad Johnson from, uh, I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but Ace has got a bad coke problem. And uh, his sponsor is uh, is uh, Josh Todd from, and again, I shouldn't say this out loud, but Josh is his sponsor for Buck Cherry. He's addicted to upskirt porn. And, uh, and they're both being sponsored by the Eagles. The, uh, the whole band, the Eagles. There's, anyways, uh, another fucking podcast right here with Izzy Presley. And uh, call your sponsor, fucking A. <laughs> that is funny. Fucking Craig Gas. <laughs> Craig that's Gas. Great. That's great. Oh, that's good stuff. That is good stuff. We are back with the one and only <laughs> Tiffany. Yes, Ronald. Like you asked before. Wait a minute. The Tiffany. It's like yes. The Tiffany. Oh, God. He, Ronald's checking in from Saskatchewan. Take off, you hoser. Oh, let's see. Born this way, heavy metal. Uh, yeah. Good evening, Tiffany. Uh, where's, oh, here's a, here's a question before we get into the, uh, in the record. Um, Mr. Jacobus from Florida wants to know, uh, what music do you listen to now? Well, I listen to my own album. Oh, no. <laughs> No, I do, um, which is really cool, actually. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, I listen to a little bit of everything. I listen to The Killing Floor, who's in the house right now with me as well, my producer and oh, gotcha, tour manager, yes. Mark Alberici. So, um, I, you know, Foo Fighters, this record, definitely Dave Grohl influenced me a lot. Um, and and also his work ethic and, you know, just, just him. I think he's really cool. I got to meet him this year. So that was great. Uh, I listen to a variety of stuff. I mean, I really do. I'm always listening to stuff that I would never record uh, mm-hmm. as a vocalist. You know, I mean, I love, you know, 
Florence and the Machine for different reasons. I love all of her inflections. I love her hippy dippiness, you know, and just long dresses. Anybody can rock a long dress and not look like a grandma. She has my vote. Um, and she's really cool. She's a great performer, you know. So, I mean, obviously, I listen to a bunch of different people. I'm not really too, you know, involved in, like, pop music, really, uh-huh. right now. Um, you know, I think everybody kind of sounds the same right now. It's kind of driving me nuts. So, I mean, everybody, you know, I'm a big advocate for every. there's room for everyone. Right, right, right. But, you know, for me as a listener, I would prefer a little bit of variety. I think that a lot of pop music is just kind of... It's lost the plot. Same right. thing with country. I live in Nashville, and I'm not a big fan, although I love you guys. You're my friends, and, you know, I support your careers. But a lot of my friends are doing the bro country, and I'm yeah. just not a big fan. Do, do, yeah, I'm do, just not a big do. fan. Yeah, it's uh, – I, I don't – some of it I don't mind, but for the most part, it's like, ah, it's just it's, – it's cookie cutter, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think – I was raised in, in a household here in Norwalk, and I started singing here in L.A. doing country music. Oh, wow. At the time, I was nine years old, and I, I know, opened up for Mickey Gilley and Johnny Lee and Hoyt Axton. It was Hoyt Axton who actually sent me to Nashville for the very first time. Oh, wow. So I was there at 10 trying to get a record deal. Um, but there's just there was no content for me. I mean, you know, what was it going to – it's all about being in a bar or – it was – everybody said, you're too young. Come back. Um, but you know, I went over to Nashville and the one thing that my experience from the very beginning, there was songwriting and, and again, being personable with the fans. So I did my first fanfare. We called it fanfare at that time, um, at 10 and I wasn't even famous, but it was that, you know, interaction. I learned, you know, that you're never bigger than the fan. And that's what I loved country music for. Um, and I grew up listening to a lot of Emmy Lou Harris, who's a great songwriter. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so that was my kind of, I guess, my bonding with Nashville, as I knew it would make me a better artist, a bigger, better songwriter. So over the years, even like I said in in the early '90s, I moved there to to grow as a songwriter because in LA, people kind of again had that stigma about me. If they said, "Let's write something," they'd pull out a you know, a, a pop song. And it yeah, was yeah. like meant to be, you know, just like a 15 minute thing. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to write any of that. So it became really awkward mm-hmm. for me. And I went to Nashville where they were like, you want to be a writer? We'll see. And I totally fucked up. Like the first three, four months I was there, I would be driving home from a session, just crying and going, oh my God, because I, I wasn't ready to have a booking that was with really solid writers but my yeah. name got me through the door right right right. um but i really didn't have the chops and so it was i mean again you have to go through all of that stuff behind the scenes and learn to fail and you know and, and but you'll grow through that i mean it was you know i i really took it serious and kept doing it that's the thing mm-hmm. well i suppose it was kind of like getting thrown thrown into the deep end and go swim I mean, yeah, like I said, my name got me, you know, all these great writing sessions. I didn't really want to do that. I, but my manager was like, no, 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 you're, this is what you're going to do. You know, you're going to go. And, and of course, I wanted to write with these amazing people. Yeah. Who do, you know, but I, I was dying a horrible death. Um, and so I took, I, I actually came back to LA and just started, you know, writing with my band members where I felt I could write what I wanted to write. Um, and, you know, I was encouraged to just kind of, you know, again, no walls. Just yeah. We're you know, and again, there's you know, a lot of times when you say you're going to write with somebody, they're like, "What's the new record?" And then there's all this responsibility and expectation. And I was like, I just want to write, just to write. Yeah. Um, and I think my band members have always given me, the, you know, that, those opportunities, and I grew definitely. And now, I mean, it's kind of it's. I mean, I'm very thankful. Nashville knows me more as a songwriter than Tiffany. Right. Which I love. Oh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's a great honor. How does, uh, how does one Ramon's haircut Johnny Martin fit into this whole thing? I adore him. Thank you I for getting too. my back last night when I couldn't fucking remember those <laughs> lyrics. It was the worst thing. And I've never actually had that experience. And to be in a room with such talent and, you know, I mean, they're like, everybody's like family there and it's great. Yeah, and it's yeah. great to be included in that. Like I said, it, it's been a dream of mine for a long time. And I just, I learned the wrong song. And I can rock that song, by the way. Um, but <laughs> it was the it wrong was. song. So then I was like running all day to catch up and learn the right song. And I just was not retaining it. So the band rocked last night. Um, and I got like, what, a couple of lines out and then went, I don't know. And I had my cheat sheet and everything. But I mean, I 
I was in pain. And by that time, I was panicking because it's like I've never had that experience. Usually, you know, I can – I think I panicked is what it was. It just wasn't there. This is when and- you have to go to the Vince Neil School of Singing and just do this. Point the microphone well, to I the did, crowd. I was holding on for dear life to some guy's hand who was trying so hard to, like, feed me the lyrics. But I, I was all – fuck by then I was just like let's just uh, you know and I did I got off stage and I looked at Mark and I said I'm getting drunk (laughs) it was like oh okay (laughs) I need to take that memory away immediately but everybody played well I mean the band killed it Um, and it was great to be there so you know I mean I'll come back and rock it too bad you're not around next week because I host the one at Lucky Strike the one very cool. Yeah, I've never, I've never. Oh, uh, it's done a that. great, it's a great, great time. And if you guys, anybody is around uh, Hollywood the day after Christmas, come on down to Lucky Strike. It's at Hollywood and Highland for Sound Check Live, and uh, your mega host Izzy Presley will be uh, emceeing the evening. Oh, thank you, Jacob. It's such an awesome interview. Um, so going back to your question, because I never answered your question about Johnny. Uh, that's Mark. Um, they've toured together, L.A. Guns. And, oh, okay. And Killing Floor. And so when we were doing this album, The Color, um, The Pieces Me, sorry, um, we were going to all different studios, and Mark was just pulling people in, bringing people into my life. So he brought in Johnny. He played on one of the songs. And, um, you know, I'm very, again, this album has been such an experience. I've grown on this album as well. Going and, and do, you know, recording at Rockfields in mm-hmm. Wales, where Bohemian Rhapsody was recorded. Oh, wow. Stay on the property. I've never done anything like that. And I think I'm addicted to that now because it's it's something I've always wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. Emmy Lou Harris, Stevie Nicks, Led Zeppelin, all these people have done it. And I've watched all these documentaries or heard their stories. And, you know, I was a person that would get the album, read all the notes and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's something I've always wanted to do. Um, and it has changed how I record records because no one is rushing to get, you know, home to have dinner or yeah. this. And, you know, they're there, they're locked in for three days. And all you do is create music and it's, and, and vibe off of each other. And I do think that's why the album sounds the way that it does. Um, and you know, it, it, it was a really great experience for me because, you know, I'm used to walking in a studio. Used to, most of the time, the band's not even there. Right. So we recorded this as a band. Oh, that's and awesome. And then, and then having that experience where we were just there for three days and did nothing but drink red wine and a little Jim Beam. Oh, a little Jim uh, Beam. And yes, yes, yes. create music and write songs. And, you know, I mean, we were still even writing, even though we had some songs in mind to record there. Whatever happened was going to happen. That's awesome. And That's I, the best I way think to do it. it's nice to be able to have that time to take as well. Yeah. Speaking of creating music, any of you guitar players out there, go ahead and check out Beater Amplifications. You like that segue? Beateramplification.com, badass, balls out, testicular fortitude and ahead, three channels. One channel is that high gain channel. The other channel is like the ACDC Kiss channel. And of course, we have the clean Fender Tone channel as well. These things are badass, hand built. 100 watts of testicular fortitude. Pull two tubes and you got a 50. They are amazing. Check them out. Beateramplification.com. I am proud to be their artists and bass players. Yes, they have bass rigs coming out now as well. All the way up to, I think he's going to put a 21-inch speaker in. In the biggest one, which is... That's kind of like uh, make you shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so bass players have always wanted to do that. There is your chance. So check those guys out. Beater Amplification. And uh, the record came out. Um, how long ago did the record come out? The record's been out about uh, two months now. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. so it's still fairly fresh. Oh, it's very fresh. And it, and we really haven't worked it in America. Uh, it's been... I've been UK-based for a little while now and decided to kind of drop the record there and do a lot of touring. I want to open up more of the, the touring base for me there in Europe. And yeah. and UK has always been wonderful to me. Um, but, you know, it was uh, working records here in America is very hard. Um, and, again, I just kind of thought it would be easier. And, and now that I'm touring, because I stopped flying for 10 years, I had some oh, really wow. unique experiences that are not the norm. And it just – I couldn't get on a plane. So that – you know, hurt me from seeing family to touring to a lot of different things. And I just couldn't do it. Now that I'm up and running, I want to keep going. But, you know, it's been over the years, it's been the people and the encouragement that they've seen a lot of things I am doing here 
in America, like the, the A Million Miles show or, mm-hmm. you know, even like some of these, you know, spontaneous shows, the pop-up shows, I call them. Uh, and they saw that and they were like, please bring this to our country, please. And it gave me a lot of encouragement to get back on a plane. But, I mean, it sounds cheesy, but it was really the album and the music behind me that I was like, oh, no, it's right. This this needs to be heard. Right. This is the album. Um, so thank you, everyone, for all the love and support and stuff with the flying because I'm, I'm getting on planes, but I, you know, I still I get a little nervous coming <laughs> here. The plane was very bumpy and I was just, you know, it, it, no one likes turbulence. I mean, let's right, 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 right. But for me, I just immediately go into – you know, panic mode because of my, you know, other experiences. So, you know, um, but I got here and I'll have to get on a plane and go back somewhere else. Go. And I'm I'm doing it. I just have to believe that, again, where I'm at, all the things that I've been through, this is my time. This is my purpose. I'm going to do what I love and the rest I'm not in control with. So, you know, I'm just vibing off the music and, and truly excited to take this music around the world. It really is everything i've wanted so why wouldn't i just celebrate that yeah you guys are absolutely gonna love this record uh scotty strickland uh here's a tying into that with the music and the new record pieces of me uh which way can we as fans purchase your music so you get more of the money oh uh well i mean it's gonna be on my website tiffanytunes.com so you could go there uh but you know i mean go wherever is convenient for you Really, truly. I just want to get the music out there. I mean, obviously, we all want to, you know, make something off of our music. But uh, more than anything, I'd love you to get the album and come to a show. Because I think that's the next, you know, highlight of yeah, this music, it's, and, really. And, you know, as somebody that I was, I was that guy, I'm like, oh, I'll go see Tiffany. Why not? <laughs> you know, I, 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 gotta, I gotta see it. I, I have to see it. And fucking, it's like, you can sing like a motherfucker. Thank you. Thank you. I was waiting for you to bust out some concrete blonde. I want to hear you sing <laughs> fucking Johnette. <laughs> no, I, and people don't know that about me. Yeah. I mean, they really, I think one of the biggest compliments I get is they're like, you kind of sound like a little like Ann Wilson a little bit. And I get a big smile oh, on yeah. my face. Because, I mean, definitely Stevie is my go-to, but Ann uh-huh. Wilson is another one, you know, definitely. And her voice is phenomenal. Um, so, you know, to be told that, that I can carry it, uh, is a, is I get a big smile on my face, put it that way. I'm very, very happy girl. Uh, and that's what I'm doing now. I'm just going out and I'm singing my heart out and people are getting the message and telling a few other friends and we're growing. Yeah, and the one thing that I did like about the record too is like it, it's it's a very dark record. It um is. And there was the only one song that really had that upbeat 80s vibe to it. All the rest is like just right. fucking in your face. I Thank love you. It. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is probably, as a writer, this is probably the most exposed that I've been because mm-hmm. I definitely talk about failures and I talk about being pissed off and I talk about, you know, people who have done me wrong in a nice, I mean, you know, go ahead. I'll just write a song about you. That's yeah. how we take care of that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there was a lot in there. And, and, and so I just, I, it just was the tracks. And I don't know, one of my favorite songs off the album is called The Fall. And, you know, it really was the band was in there creating and everybody was just coming up with ideas and killing it. And I was, you know, sitting there waiting to write some. I had only a few lyrics down and just watching them create and watching and being a part of that vibe. And as the song grew, I don't know, it just I took a pen and just started to write like a crazy person. I didn't I've never really had these experiences before, but the lyrics just came flowing out of me. You know, and, you know, a lot of this is about being in a relationship, you know, that you are waiting for something, you know, for it not to really be a relationship. Um, And, you know, probably that's me just living, you know, through another divorce now. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, things change and I don't want to get bitter about it. But, you know, people let you down. And I'm sure that's what I was channeling on this album a little bit, sometimes maybe for me, sometimes for other people. I don't know. You know, there's been a lot of things that I've seen for other people, things I didn't understand, a lot of death in my life. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. people dying of di- addiction or uh, cancer, you know, people I thought that would be here for forever. Um, and then they're gone. So, you know, I have my music and I think I'm loving that. And that's my gift right now because I have had loss, a lot of loss for like five years back to back, which was awful. Um, and I miss those people every day. 
Mm-hmm. Well, they, you really have the makings of a good country record with all that hard. I do. Have uh, you ever thought about doing a country record? I did do a country re- record um, again from my you know earlier start. Mm-hmm. Uh, I realized that you know when I became successful, and again I was a kid. Yeah. But I did. I never said thank you. To people who believed in me or let me get up and play with their band um, and, you know, gave a referral to my dad or, you know, I mean, literally I was jamming with bands when I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I mean, it takes a lot of people to like believe, you know, it takes a lot of faith to believe in this little girl um, and then let her sing with your band and, you know, and then to give her a contact and push her forward and not want anything from that. And I realized I never stopped and really said thank you to a lot of these people, and that's not okay because who knows? I may, I might have still got a record deal. Who knows? But yeah. the Tiffany that I am now started then, all that experience. Um, and so I did a record called Rose Tattoo when I first got to Nashville. Again, that whole let's write. And I, and I thought, well, I, you know, I'm going to write for something. And, and I did. I put – um, Hoyt Axton in there, big thank you, and May Axton, and all the people who helped me. Because it really, I mean, I it just dawned on me one day. I thought, I stayed in contact with a lot of people, but I don't think I actually said thank you, and that's not okay. I need to do that, and what a better way to do it, but to honor them in music. It's an amazing attitude to have. I love that. Uh, it's a little bit more listener feedback before we finish up here. Uh, Anthony wants to know... Uh, did you ever date Corey Feldman or hang around with him? I did. Corey's a friend of mine still. Um, yeah, no, he's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did all of that when I was, you know, 18, probably 17, 18, 19 when I got off the road. I did come up to Hollywood and, you know, party and hang out and stuff. But it was it was a big risk for me because I was like the girl next door and all that. Yeah, kind yeah. Of stuff. And, and to be quite honest with you, because I come from – you know, I'm a child of an alcoholic, and, and there's a lot of alcoholism in my family and mm-hmm. stuff. I was scared to death and getting caught up in it because good people get caught up in it. Yep. Um, and I know myself, you know, and there was every reason to, like, nobody's going to tell you no. Uh, exactly. And, you know, it was all glamorous, going to clubs and hanging out. So I just kind of thought, I'm going to go to Orange County and go move there in the conservative world and maybe save my life. <laughs> because, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I knew I would get into trouble. And that's when I ended up getting pregnant. So probably it, was, it really was for the best because, I mean, look, you know, a lot of people didn't fend well in, in the early 80s in that time period. But Corey, is a, he's, a, he's a different breed. <laughs> yes, he is. I've, met, a different I've, I've breed. met him a couple times and he got mad at me. Because he didn't, he obviously didn't take the joke very well. But I introduced him as Mouth one night. <laughs> I'm like, oh come on, laugh, Corey. It's a joke. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some things like that he doesn't take. Yeah. He doesn't have a sense of humor on that stuff. But I mean, he's a good guy. You know, he's a yeah, lot of fun. yeah. Um, uh, Jacobus just said, I just bought it through her website. Gonna rock it out after the podcast. Very well. Just bought the record. Thank you. Uh, Ronald says, uh, Concrete Blonde. Holy fuck. Yes, Concrete Blonde is amazing. And actually, I had Johnette on the show a couple months ago. I was bugging her for six oh, years. Oh, very cool. And uh hour and a half, we talked about Concrete Blonde for five minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. She <laughs> had ghost stories. And it it was an amazing, amazing conversation. It was very cool. cool. What else do we got here? Uh, let's see. I already asked that one. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Dave Stabley says, Izzy, tell her when she wants to do all her music video for her CD. I'd be happy to help. Well, okay. thank you. There's two. I have two videos actually out. Oh, nice. Um, there's one called Worlds Away, which is the first single. And then Beautiful is about to come out in probably a couple of days, actually. Oh, very cool. Well, I will uh, share but that. But thank you. Definitely I will share, share the contact. that. And uh, Ronald says, Tiff, all your exes live in Texas for sure. Old school. Love it. There you go. They should. They should live in Texas. There you I'll go. Send them there. Uh, people want to find you. <laughs> <laughs> people want to find you on social media. Um, I, I know you're very fun on social media. How can they? Uh, how can they? Find TiffanyTunes.com. That'll that's that'll take you to everything. My Twitter, my Facebook, all everything. And um, you know, we keep the the website. You can stream. We're streaming some of the songs for the new album, so you can check it out there as well. I just say go buy it. Well, definitely. I would say go buy it. Fuck. I mean, you know, definitely go buy it. But if you're curious yeah, okay, and you just want to know that you're making a right purchase, uh, go to the website and check it out. Yeah, you that, know, I mean, that's my thing. I, I really feel really confident on this album. So, you know, however the music gets into somebody's hands, 
totally cool. Uh, more importantly, it, seriously, come out to a show because we yeah. just we elevate the album. I mean, the album's amazing, but what we do on stage, we take it to the next level, and and people don't expect that from me as a performer. Um, and I'm working with amazing musicians, so you know we have a really good time at the shows. Put it that way. Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. And uh, I, you know, I can't wait to see it live myself. You Thank know? you. Because it was what was it? It was a year ago. Was it a year ago? Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to come back at the end of next year. Okay. And have a string of dates. So nice. You know, TiffanyTunes.com. It'll be all up there. Nice. All right. I'm just gonna make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, so yeah, TiffanyTunes.com. Check that out. Go buy the new record. It is called Pieces of Me. Tiffany, thank you. Thank you. This was a lot of fun. I'm glad I finally got you in studio. Well, I'm sorry you got me the day after, you know, a good Oh, no, it's all out. good. But it's we were good. together. We were in it together, right? That's right. We were. <laughs> uh, thank you, Tiffany and Izzy, for another awesome podcast. Thank you. Uh, really awesome. I'm going to be buying a couple of her records for sure. Please come to Canada. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And uh, Scotty, thank you very much. And take off, you hoser. All right. Oh, uh, what else do we got? I think that is it. Tiffany, uh, you are welcome back anytime. Oh, thank you, babe. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah. So check out her stuff. The new album is called Pieces of Me. You can get that uh, anywhere they sell music, pretty much. Pretty and, but much. just go to TiffanyTunes.com. Let me hit my outro music here. This has been another FN podcast. Be back next week. I uh, know. Next, next Tuesday's Christmas. Maybe I'll do a show where I call all my Jewish friends and wish them Merry Christmas. <laughs> That could be fun. I don't know. We'll see. We got Chris Wise coming up soon. He was supposed to be last night, but uh, he got pulled off into some session work. And uh, he's got when the when the new Hollywood Vampires record comes out, he will be in studio. Uh, what uh, um, um, Jesse Camp from the MTV days will be coming in studio soon. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up. I look forward to it. Thank you guys for checking in. Please again make sure all of the uh all of the social media at real Izzy presley at another effing podcast on facebook as well and of course every morning monday through friday 4 a.m to 10 a.m california time on the monsters of rock on the dash radio network live via satellite worldwide we'll see you next week everybody also please make sure you check out uh john palumbo design.com we love some john palumbo and also a and Productions Laser Engraving Division, APLaser.com. See you next week. Don't forget what I lack in talent. I do make up for in cock. My name is Izzy Presley. Go fuck yourselves. <laughs>